Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. What's going on, guys? Now, uh, advisor Tony Gonzalez has been in contact with former world champion Yuki Oris Gamboa, and according to the advisor, the talent of Cuban will eventually be making his way down to the fertile, the very fertile junior lightweight division as per BoxingScene.com. Shout out to BoxingScene.com. Now, Yuki Oris Gamboa, from what I've been reading here and what I've been researching, is saying that, um, or it's being rumored that he's going to be going down to 130 pounds and uh, potentially fighting a guy in Vasil Lomachenko, and that would be a great fight, man. You know, you have, uh, first of all, in Gamboa, a gold medalist coming, you know, a gold medal blue chip Cuban amateur Lomachenko, a gold medal blue chip, arguably the greatest amateur of all time. So with that being said, um, here's what uh, Thomas Gonzalez, the, uh, the Cuban advisor, said, or the advisor said about Yukiris Gamboa. He said this, I, I quote, he's conversed with me that his intention is to go ahead and do a tune-up fight sometime in the next couple months. Then towards the end of the year, set up a fight with one of the bigger names at 130. Before it was Rocky Martinez, Obviously now, Vasil Lomachenko is coming into the mix, so I would say that the plan is still on course for him to do a quick tune-up against a worthy opponent, someone who will give us some work, and later down the road where he can step up and face Lomachenko or someone else at 130. I wouldn't say that they are resoundingly, that they are res, they are resoundingly over, but if it's a favorable matchup at 135, it's something that he wouldn't shun. That's exactly word for word what he told me. I don't think he wants to get into the same situation where he was caught up in with Terrence Carver where he was giving up too much in weight. 135 is now what he really has in mind. His focus for 2016, early, early 2017, and I wouldn't completely rule out 135. For now, he's at 130, and that's where his focus is. There are fights to be made. So, man, you can always get Boa versus Lomachenko be a great matchup. Obviously, you would have to favor Lomachenko right now. He just seems to be the younger, fresher, um, fighter, but when we talk about skills, um, I mean, damn, I, I, that's a great fight. That's, that would be an entertaining fight. You're talking about speed from Gamboa, agility from Gamboa, power from Gamboa. Lomachenko, you're talking about a guy who just went in there, first fight at 130, took on a top five fighter, won it in Rocky Martinez, destroyed him in five rounds, arguably had the knockout of the year. And he's, he's, he's doing things in boxing that we've, we've never seen before, really, honestly. Guy, for a guy to have as many legitimate names he has in his resume, you know, wins um, in only, what, seven or eight professional fights? Unheard of. You know, Gary Russell, he beat, now he beat Roman Martinez. Um, really, he got, he could have had Orlando, Orlando Slido on his resume too, but um, that fight didn't go his way as far from the judges. So, Lomachenko versus Gamboa, I, I, I'm not opposed to that. Um, Gamboa was a guy that, no matter what you want to say, you know, against Crawford, went in there, he was boxing his ears off the first Three, round, three rounds or so, boxing his ears off, and he showed a great. great he showed all. He showed some heart in that fight. Um, delivered a great performance. To be honest, you only got knocked out, still delivered a great performance. Um, so against Lomachenko, you know, for Gamboa, I think for him, he's he's kind of been one of those guys that, you know, the hype on him was was very large at one point. He had these ridiculous expectations, being a blue chip, you know, great Cuban amateur. Hadn't quite lived up to him due to inactivity and, and 50, 50 cent jerking him around with his career. But, um, not jerking him around, but I'm saying, like, not getting, putting his career in the best position. So, with all that being said, you know, Gamboa, if he is to fight a Lomachenko, right? And let's say, let's say he does get the thing, but let's say as an underdog, Gamboa goes in there and he, like, beats or knocks out Lomachenko, you know, which I'm not expecting him to do, but I'm saying if it happens. That's a career-defining career win, and, 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 and he can finally have that win in his career where uh, he, finally, he finally lived up to some of those expectations he had early on. So, um, yeah, for Gamboa, I'll, I'll love that fight. Um, you know, I think 130 is where he should be at. I wouldn't focus on going to 135 or anything like that. Stay at 130, because that, that, that seems to be where he's um, best suited for. So, let me know, I mean... That, that's the news, man. Uh, Lomachenko potentially fighting Gamboa. Gamboa has plans to um, do some tune-ups, fight at 130, and um, fight some big opponents there. So Lomachenko's on his agenda, agenda. So let me know what you guys think. Gamboa versus Lomachenko. Is that a fight 
you guys would uh, love to see, and if so, who do you think would win? Leave your comments down below, take the time to subscribe, and you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Dania. So until next time, take care, guys.